How would you like to get better at tapping into your own wisdom, into your own divinity, so you can step into your gifts and your passion and your purpose and make sure that you're on your path so you can show up more fully in this world of who you authentically really are as an expression of who you really are? So today I want to talk to you about presence, and there's so much conversation around it. Of course, everybody talks about being present, but how can we really do that, and how can we apply that to our lives in a way that makes sense and is doable and is just an easy way to move through our lives where it's not something that we have to do, but becomes more of a state, a state of our mind and of our mindset. So to be able to tap into our infinite wisdom, I want to talk to you about a couple of things. One is, what is our infinite wisdom? And it's essentially, you know, we all have a higher self. I believe there's so much more to us than just being in these meat bodies. We can tap into our own higher selves, our own divinity, and connect with the angelic realms and with God or source or whatever we want to call it. It it doesn't really matter the semantics. What matters is that we feel that connection with, with each other and with something that is greater than ourselves. And many of us feel this, but a lot of us that go through lives If we're distracted, if we're stressed, if we're just living from moment to moment in chaos and not really being present, it's really hard to tap into our authentic selves and our divine wisdom. So this divinity is there, and I believe we are born into this life. Our soul has had many, many, many lives, and we choose this life that we come into now. Now, how to become present in it, though, and how do we tap into that knowing? And it comes down to being still. We have to make sure that we're not walking around distracted, that we're not going from thing to thing. And thinking about what's next while you're doing one thing is really not being present. And if we think about it, there is only now. If you look at your cell phone or if you look at your watch, if you wear one, it's now. What time is it? It's now. It's now. It's now. It's not tomorrow o'clock. It's not yesterday o'clock. It's now. And life is a little bit like a flip book. You know, if there's a little drawing on one piece of paper and then you flip the page and the drawing is slightly different and you flip the page and the drawing is slightly different, it's these now moments that give us the illusion of time and the illusion of movement, right? So there is just now. And we can't be living yesterday. We can't be living tomorrow. And I think where we get kind of caught up in uh, the issues around that is that We get so stressed about what happened yesterday and we carry all this energy with us and it really weighs us down. It's to our uh, detriment, actually. If we're thinking too much about yesterday, we need to not hold grudges. We need to release things and just stay present and not worry about the future so much. Have faith that things will work out right for us. So one of the ways that I really like to say and practice being present is the I am affirmation. I am makes it real. I am brings such power and force to just the words which carry energy. I am, it makes it real and it brings you right into the present. So I just like to say, whenever I feel distracted, I am present. And I just let that resonate with me. I am present, if you'll say it with me and see how it feels. It feels really different. I am present. Helps you clear your mind and clear the clutter. So you're just here right now. And we know that no matter what is going on around in our lives, if we can sit here and we can say, I am okay, I am okay. In this moment, if you can say, I am okay, we are okay. We truly are. So, so much of what goes on in life, we create, we assign meaning to everything that goes on in our lives. And so it's all in how we interpret things and our mindset. So a few things that you can do that I do at home to practice presence are really simple, is take the mundane things in our lives. It could be something like washing the dishes. And as we're washing the dishes, rather than thinking about, gotta get this done, gotta help the kids with the homework, I've gotta do this, gotta do that, what's next, what's next, pack the lunches for the next day, get ready for work, check emails, do the laundry, you know, we can come up with a list of a thousand things that we do need to do legitimately. But if we just say, we're gonna do the dishes and we use all of our senses, 
and we put our hands in the soapy water and we can see that the suds, the soap, the bubbles, they're iridescent and the light is reflecting off them. And it's reflecting all these beautiful colors. And we smell the aroma of the dish soap, of whether it's palm olive or whatever, <laughs> whatever it is you decide to use. And we, so we get this sense of the aroma of the smell and we feel the warmth on our hands and we feel the silkiness or the viscosity of the bubbles. And it just brings us into the very present as we are absorbing and enjoying all of these things. All of a sudden we are enjoying doing the dishes rather than making it drudgery or a task. We're enjoying being present. And you could think about also perhaps you're going on a walk in a forest or you're taking your little doggy for a walk. Whatever it is, as you're walking, you can breathe in the fresh air. You can feel a little bit of a breeze as it comes across you. You can feel your feet on the forest floor or on the sidewalk and feel how that impact feels on your body. We can release all of our energy to the trees. I love doing that. I love being out in nature, releasing the energy, allowing it to just leave you and give it up to something higher than yourselves. Let it be recycled and then allow yourself to bring in a beautiful healing energy and light. And so I'm hoping that these things help you. They have really helped me. Several businesses, four kids, a dog, a husband, <laughs> got a lot going on, but it's all fulfilling. Hi, I'm Tony Julian, and I'm the founder of Tony's Kitchen and also Conscious Wellness. Thank you so much for inviting me to be with you today. And I am so sorry I can't be with you in person. Uh, so I'm hoping this video that is designed just for you will suffice. I consider myself a strong woman because I've been able to build uh, six businesses in spite of adversity that I've been through in my life. And there's a running joke in my family, which is that I start a business every 10 years, which is pretty accurate. Um, and it's not that I get bored or that I'm a risk taker and I need to, you know, move on to the next greatest, best thing. It's really more that I am very creative. I follow my heart. And once I have put um, something into this creation and I have built it and I feel like I've done all that I can using my gifts, I am also on this path of spiritual growth at the same time. And so my heart just feels like I need to take things to the next level. So I started out um, in a um, kind of more of a marketing communications firm. I worked at National Semiconductor for six years in marketing communications management. And one of the situations that was a little bit of a low spot for me is that after five years, I decided to have my first child. And when I came back to uh, my office, my position was no longer there and my office note was no longer there. And I was told to go scrounge for a desk and go get a light bulb and go get supplies. And they escorted me to like a, techni a technical literature area where I was supposed to just create my own space again. And I was just very discontent. I felt like it was such a slap in the face. I didn't feel respected. I didn't feel valued. So because of that, I decided to uh, create my own equality. You know, keep in mind, this was in the 80s, especially in an era, an era of a very male-dominated workforce where we women were just trying to forge our way uh, and equal pay wasn't even a consideration back in that time frame. So I decided to venture out and start a marketing communications firm. And because of this, I was able to actually, within just a few short years, climb to uh, the top 5% of all entrepreneurial women in the United States in terms of income at that time. I managed trade shows and conferences and special events. Instead of people having internal uh, trade show coordinators, I acted as an extension of companies like HP and Intel. And I just really narrowed down what I did. I knew what was unique about it and I brought my skill set to it. And this was at a time where I had a, literally I started it because I had a, um, a like an infant, I had a husband who was depressed and he was also out of work. And I started this business out of my home actually without even enough money to pay the next month's mortgage. 
So it was a little bit of a brave thing to do, but I just felt like I was confident enough to know that I could pull this off and I could do a good job at no matter what I did. And so I just really focused on doing the best job that I could, being very service oriented, very fair, having ethics and integrity. And I built an amazing business with employees and, and everything for, you know, the next 14 years. So um, I bring this up because there's this difference between working for someone and working for yourself. And a lot of what I have to say really can apply toward either because if you have your own business, you know, you are that person that's accountable. If you're working for someone else, you can still treat that like it's your own business because if you're in sales or if you're in a position of customer service or you're in a position of servicing even internal people, you're still in that position of doing, you know, operating with integrity, operating with equanimity, like making sure that every single situation is the best possible outcome for everybody, following through with your word. Like and bringing your feminine traits to it, I think, which is so important, is that we women do not need to look at trying to fit in and trying to act masculine so we can fit into this environment. Masculine and fem feminine energies are both very important. And when we have that balance, that's when we, we can really like step into our gifts in a really safe way. And I've learned so much more since then, just in terms of my um, spirituality, I've been able to merge in um, just not only this confidence in myself and this leap of faith within myself, but to bring in um, other women and other, other people at the same time. And it's really for me as uh, we go through this, uh, you know, maturing process, I will call it, is... Um, and something that I would, I wished I could have known as my younger self, which is when there are things going on around us, I always felt like I had to control situations. Um, and I think that stemmed from my childhood, which it was very out of control. You know, I had an alcoholic parent. I've been through um, physical abuse, emotional abuse. My spirit was just really squashed as a child. I wasn't allowed to show up in the way that that I really could. I couldn't be myself. And I was this very different kind of child. I don't think my parents quite knew what to do with me. I was just always very observant, very sensitive. And um, so I didn't always fit in. And so I think for one of the things that I would say to my younger self is like, not, don't try to fit in. And I love this time in this space where we are in all of our lives right now, where we're really beginning to open up to diversity, really being able to value and cherish people for the divine gifts that they are, and really look out to each and every single human being as somebody to be cherished for their differences, and not being able to you know, try to try to fit in, uh, but being really true to yourself. So there were so many instances when I was younger, especially as a younger woman in my 20s and my 30s, and even my, in my 40s, where I felt like I was putting up with things because I had to. And guess what? We don't have to, and we don't at all. But the secret that I found is not to get through it in a way that is an angry way, but to really be heart-centered, connect our heads to our hearts, and I do some meditations on this that, that I teach, but really just be connected and be heart-centered and show up in a way where you're looking out for the best interest of everybody and not use that anger. Sure, it, it's really easy to feel, to feel slighted, to feel like things aren't fair, things are unjust, but just recognize that in our earth, our earth is just filled with all of these, you know, feminine people, masculine people. There are masculine people that have feminine energies, men and women both, right? And there's just this internal balance, and then there's this balance within the world. And I like just really being able to focus on being ourselves, being heart-centered, and being able to bring that balance. And instead of being angry, is just recognize that there can be a tsunami around us. There can be a hurricane, and we can be that eye of the hurricane. We can be calm, and we can be centered. And instead of being irrational or instead of being reactive, we can really express our true selves, our genuine selves. And that's where I think women especially can show up in the world in a greater way.
And nobody can take our power away from us unless we give them that permission first. So I like to say like one of the things that is so, so important for women is to invest in yourself. And so many of us have grown up, especially for me being a child in the late, late fifties and sixties and seventies growing up is that we are really programmed and conditioned to feel like we don't have a voice and we really do. And I feel like we need to really step into our intuition and use those gifts and not, not make sacrifices. There's no reason we should have to compromise on anything, on what our dreams are, on what we believe is to be true for ourselves, on protecting our family and our friends and having priorities and values. And to me, it never mattered what other people's values were. It only mattered what mine were. Um, so with that, I also like to be very still and just tap into my, my intuition. And I think when we do that, we can really take the time instead of being caught up in the flow of everything around us is just, you know, really take that time to, to be centered and, and trust ourselves. And as women, we must invest in ourselves. We think about, you know, Corinthian wealth management. We think about our finances. That's one bank. And you've got three other banks that you can use. One is that um, your bank of your emotional wealth, your physical wealth, and your spiritual wealth. And I believe in making deposits into those and investing in those areas for yourself as you go through your life. And as you go through your life, I will ask you to consider this notion that self-love is the foundation for self-care. And when you have that self-love, self-care becomes effortless. It takes away willpower. It takes away going with the flow. It takes away just, you know, peer pressure. It takes away all those things. So I would ask you instead to come to every situation with equanimity looking out for the best interests of all involved, being heart-centered and confident. And I believe that in our society and throughout most of the world, women have been suppressed and devalued. And it's time where we can see that impact, that ev evidence is everywhere around us. Um, it's created imbalances in politics and in religion and in governments and in businesses. And it's a negatively impacted our humanity and our beautiful earth. So I just ask for you now to assert your, what I call the divine feminine, your high vibrational way of living, sacred and equanimous in nature, healing and nurturing, connected and protective, and where you can show up with your voice, your purpose, your power, your light, and your gifts. And... Um, just when we become aware of this balance, this importance of self-love and self-care, we can show up in the world as just a very fierce and loving presence. So I hope this has given you some insights into um, my life and what is motivating me. And I feel like I have found my purpose and I am just so very grateful to all of you for listening. 